Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to tell you about the weather, the news. For, uh, it's, it's Friday, so I have Flagship Friday video of the week. It is a sequel to a movie that was already put online for your viewing pleasure. But I have that and more for Wake Up Missoula. All right, let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. 19 degrees outside, things are going to get warmer, but then there's that winter storm watch happening this weekend. We have 100 to 90 percentile chances of snow, so it's pretty much guaranteed that we're going to see a lot of that snow with lows into the 30s. Um, by the weekend, we're going to have lows into the 20s, um, and with all that snow, that's going to be coming during the warmer t side of the uh, later half of the weekend. We're also going to see um, some low temperatures as well. So maybe a lot of that snow that will fall this weekend will turn into sheetrock, basically. All right, let's talk about some snow. Looks like um, many places haven't had any fresh new powder, but of course they will be expecting a lot of this powder sometime on Sunday, so it may not be a good chance to get up on the slopes for fresh powder, but they do have plenty of slopes that have are in the green, as you can see. This is from onthesnow.com, uh, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort, Big Sky Resort. You got Black Joe Mountain Ski Area. A lot of these places are all good. They're all green to go. Uh, Lost Trail, they've had uh, struggles with finding the right amount of precipitation that they could use on their mountain. Uh, Showdown Montana, Great Divide, Maverick Mountain, all in the green with a uh, good base um, and good amount of snow. So uh, you can check all those out and more by going to onthesnow.com or to find out your weather report, you can go to the nationalweatherservice.gov. Let's talk about some news. The big news that's happening at the University of Montana is asbestos. The University of Montana just can't catch a break. And yet another problem they're facing in recent weeks is asbestos that was tested at McGill Hall with levels as high as 110,000 fibers of asbestos there. And EPA says that you have to clean up asbestos if it goes to at least 15,000. So signs posted saying McGill was closed uh, were vague, um, were posted, um, and students were unable to get access to McGill Hall. Um, in a memo posted Thursday at the building, employees were told that classes, labs, and other activities would be rescheduled and information would be posted on the all exterior doors. Exposure to asbestos fires can cause lung cancer, mesothelioma, and other lung diseases. Of course, the latency of the asbestos affecting you can be anywhere between 10 to 40 years when things might happen. Um, one thing came from this, and it was the daycare situation at the University of Montana. They have daycare at the McGill Hall. Parents of children who attended the University of Montana a preschool in McGill Hall before unacceptable levels of asbestos were found criticized officials about waiting too long to share test results and reallocate students. The story broke yesterday, but the asbestos uh, was discovered about uh, January 21st, and then further testing um, proved that the a certain measurable risk of asbestos, which required unum officials, um, had not expected to find such high levels of surface tests. But of course, when they did, they decided to move the children immediately. The highest level found in the preschool was, like I said, 110,000 fibers per square centimeter, and it was on the top of a lamp, one of those hanging lamps there. The EPA requires cleanup of at 15,000 fibers. Of course, it's not really a good start for the university for 2019. In state news, a lot of big things happened with Montana's biannual uh, legislature kicking off in the full gear this session. Among the bills, trapping, it's a big topic, and it's, it was been basically a big topic here in Montana for many years, um, rallying a way to basically ban trapping, all trapping whatsoever in the state of Montana, which failed in 2016, which was uh, effectively one of the final nails in the coffin to kind of ban it. Um, but of course, uh, a couple new bills that are coming is to uh, highly regulate trapping in West in Montana. Um, HB 280 would add a wolf license to the current sportsman license, like hunting and fishing. Uh, HB 281 would would add a license to non-residents. So if you're non-resident and wants to come and trap, you would have to. Uh, have a license to do that. Um, HB 279 would allow trappers to uh, be reimbursed for their costs. This bill is in response to an interest from the Foundation for Wildlife Management, an organization that uh, commenced an expensive reimbursement program for trappers and hunters in Idaho. The organization says it reimburses up to $1,000 for every legally harvested wolf in the state. And finally, HB 287, which would require trappers to check traps daily instead of the, a lot of it has like 40 
48 um, hour um, maximum limit. And now they want to make it a lot smaller so people will check their traps every single day. Um, in national news, um, no one's feeling the polar vortex more than the homeless in a lot of those metropolitan big cities. New York, Washington, D.C., Boston, and Chicago rank among the highest cities with the largest amounts of homeless populations, according to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and they are not being affected by this week's drastic temperatures. Um, actually, wait, they all, well, sorry, I, I misread that, but they are all being affected by this week's drastic temperatures. Without the proper clothing, hypothermia can set in without, within hours. Um, a shelter in Wisconsin found a car that someone was sleeping in completely frozen over. Many organizations have set up in larger cities a warming center that would have people stay as late as 4 p.m. to avoid some of the intense cold temperatures. Some shelters don't allow guests to stay past noon, but temperatures act as a catalyst to help those who would otherwise uh, get picked up by emergency services, which could cost hospitals up to $20,000 per person per visit. These cities, along with major cities, uh, utilize the 311 non emergency services number. So if you see somebody homeless in, uh, during these cold, cold polar vortex times, of course, it's not as bad as it was. Temperatures are improving thus far, but it's still considered winter. So you, uh, if you have uh, homeless people that you're concerned about in the area who you think that would Need it. 311 is a service for that. All right. So those are a couple of things that are happening in the news. I got a short list of programs for you guys today. Um, this is a couple new programs going to be airing on MCAT. And um, when I come back, I'll tell you all about it and how you can uh, ha find these programs and more. So stay with me. Universities shape the students who attend them. If you think about it, most of what you learn before you're 15, you can easily change your mind about. And you don't really change your mind about much of anything once you're 30. And so universities have people as their students at the most malleable moment in their lives. So I would suggest to you that whether American universities succeed and whether America succeeds. Improvise. If a piano isn't available to the student, they can sing the melodies that they're hearing and then just record them. Digging into the process and recording the results are one of the most helpful first steps to take even before pencil and paper. There are others who can help you to notate everything as well, and I'll get to those names at the end. But the most important part is to simply get the ideas out. of these programs are available online at MCAT.org. If you can't watch them on channel 189, you can always watch them here on MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your source for everything uh, made by Missoulians for Missoulians for your local and potentially uh, worldwide uh, viewing pleasure. Uh, we've had some views from people in China watching some of our live streams, so those are some of the uh, scope of how far uh, MCAT reaches in the uh, international community. You can go to channel 189. Um, you just click on the tab 189, and you can search for all the videos. Uh, the most up updated um, lists start from up on top, and it works its way down. Uh, you can see a bunch of great shows like uh, Awful Truth About Society, ASAF Cafe, Do They Just Drew, Tell Us Something, and like what you just saw the last minute was arts and above 3.0 contemporary dance all sorts of all this and more a bunch of lectures all those programs are easily accessible by going on to mcat.org all right so let's talk about some um movies that are coming out it's time for pre-critic all right kicking things off it is miss bala miss bala is a movie about a young girl 
who is thrust into a world of crime and border security thing. Um, well, I didn't really read the synopsis that well, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Miss Bala kind of sounds like somebody who doesn't know how to say Missoula. Miss Bala, Missoula, whatever. Anyways, Gina Rodriguez looks inside to not be a victim anymore. Um, and when she throws, she's thrown into a world of cr the criminal underworld. She better adapt until she comes close to s with somebody who hurt her in her past. So she overcomes herself and the person that hurt her in her past and movie happens, blah, blah, blah. And I read just a little bit of the synopsis and it's about Gloria finds a power she knew she had when she w is drawn into a dangerous world. So basically the movie is True Lies and every other movie that kind of, it's, it's Dorothy, it's Dorothy. It's uh, Wizard of Oz again. Up next, we got a movie. It's a survival drama with one character in the movie traveling down the Arctic. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Some of these terrible films are hard, hard to swallow, but Mads Mikkelsen has been very busy with old boy type style movies where he's a rugged old man just trying to... Um, one last thrill, and this time he goes to the Arctic um, called... Arctic. The movie's called Arctic. Um, anyways, this movie's about follows a man who must fight for survival in the unforgiving Arctic, uh, but learning that the Arctic was inside him the whole time. Um, you have a man stranded, a place where no human thrives, um, and, uh, and a goal. So it's man versus the wild kind of deal. And I don't even know if it's going to be in theaters. Yeah, so, well, that's that. There's a, there, there, that was just pretty much pre-credit for you guys. But I do have a video I want to show you guys, and this is the Flagship Friday video of the week. It is Thirsty Games Part 2, um, assuming that... Okay, so anyways, in the in, okay, I want to explain this a little bit more. So in the first movie, um, pretty much in it's a battle royale, kind of like Hunger Games, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the characters in the first movie die, but in the second movie, they're just like, hey... But we'll just forget about the the first movie. It was like, well, then why are you calling it Thursday Games Two? It's just like because it's the it's the same movie. So you're rebooting the movie. Like this is a week later, and you already rebooted the movie. So, anyways, that's the kind of the background explanation of how uh, ridiculous this movie is. So enjoy. Are you awake? Mm. What? Oh. Get me out of here! Do I know you guys? What is this place? Wait, not this again? Seriously? What, what do you mean, not again? Wait, I know you. You and you. But I don't know you. You know. Or you. Oh, come on. I'm just an intelligent little boy. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been selected to quench our thirst for violence in this year's Thirsty Games. It's not original, and neither are the conditions. Last one of you standing was... Um... I'm pretty sure I saw a security camera somewhere. I can probably hack into the system and show you guys. Wait, those are holographic laser beams. Wait, that means you are all lasers. That explains why there's new people here. Because that other guy and that other dude... Well, that Me? means they were all... No, not you. They were all holograms. That's why there's new people here. I know you have a lot of questions. Just hold them for one moment, please. Okay, so... If you look at the hologram thing, there must be some clues here. Oh, these are just for the actual... Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, oh my gosh! Two times here. Two times.
All right, cool. I just wanted to do that because that's like literally the best part of the whole entire movie. <laughs> I'm so mean. I'm so mean. Okay. Anyways, um, I, I hate sequels. I just, I, 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 I abhor, ab abhor sequels. Just, I loathe them. Okay. Anyways. <sighs> City Council time. Let's talk about some things that are happening with the city. The, one of the biggest things is that uh, Missoula's, uh, one of Missoula's oldest uh, businesses, um, Hokieville, um, is going to be tearing down their oldest building and setting up a new tavern. And so the city of Missoula is going to be talking a little bit more about this since it's going to be kind of like a big restaurant tavern and they're afraid that this might be turning into uh, another tap room brewery type situation in the down in the kind of like uh south higgins area so anyways this is the first quote with um let me get my notes real quick this is um andrew uh bogdan bogan bohan sorry bohan um development service talks about what it's or what, what's going to be there in hoagieville more specifically so here is the new building will have 69 interior tavern seats 20 seat first floor patio and 36 seat second floor patio. The tavern use and site design will comply with all applicable Title 20 regulations. Compliance with zoning, engineering, fire, and building code will be confirmed at the time of building permit approval per condition of approval one. The applicant site design includes new building, landscaping, bicycle parking, and outdoor seating as part of this project. The site and building will be developed with comparable building scale, building orientation, materials, and landscaping with the character of the surrounding area. All right, so just so you guys know, is that South Street is this pole right here. No, actually, this is Higgins. Um, I believe this is Franklin right below here, and right up here next door to the building complex is where um, that um, gas station is. So just kind of imagine that across the street from Higgins is where they have the um, – you know, soccer games, uh, track meets, and all that stuff for the University of Montana. And honestly, it's a really good business move because it's a uh, it's like a restaurant. It's something that I mean, a lot of like the, one of the biggest things, especially when you have a, a sports folk from out of town coming to town after the game, they need to eat. And so a lot of times they go to fast food, a lot of cl close by. So honestly, it's a really smart business strategy on that part. I'm just, I, I don't want to toot this, uh, the Ho Hoagieville owner horn, but I just think that this is a good idea on their aspect from my personal opinion. Hoagieville will be torn down and, the, and ask the city of Missoula about the zoning request for a tavern. So they're going to serve beer and alcohol there. That's the one big difference. Um, cover letter from uh, Tipple. LLC, uh, Emin Snyder wrote this to the city. Um, we are, they are proposing to tear down the current building and canopy to build a new modern style building, which will be used as a coffee shop and tavern serving beer and wine. They envision a very bright, vibrant, inviting business that will provide a greater gathering location for many of the South side neighbors and the Missoula community. Um, <clears throat> This is going to be quite the undertaking, and there uh, aren't too many places like this in the area that have a tavern of sorts. This particular area, um, you know, South and Higgins, um, it's kind of like it's a it's a throughway. A lot of times, people drive through this area. Um, Chris Colbel, uh, owner of the property, he he and three other uh, two other people are part of the company that own the Hoagievilles in town. Um, talks about the plans for the tavern um, to ease some people's um, minds about the Hoagieville. Hoagieville has been a part of my life for 30 years. I'm not by no means turning my back on Hoagieville. I'm just venturing out into new opportunities. So I definitely have floated the idea of a throwback night with cheese fries, hoagies, or tacos. Absolutely. I, I know that's a very, I've lived it every day for seven days a week for 30 years. So I, it's, it's a part of my life too. I'm not turning my back on Hoagieville. And I am still part owners in the Hoagieville on Higgins, I mean, uh, on Reserve and in the mall with Nick and Bob currently. So. It's still a part of my life. All right, so um, just because the one Hoagieville is going to be closing off of Higgins doesn't mean that the other ones are as well. Um, they plan to treat this like a restaurant to have a family atmosphere for all. Any changes to this will uh, have to go before city council once again if they were to open a bar, open up late. Um, many questions are about opening times and liquor license that allow um, gambling license, gaming license, and they're just trying to uh, figure out exactly what this tavern is going to be. Uh, but. Uh, Andrew talks uh, about parking since parking will be out back. I mean, they're building a building where the building's front 
basically goes right up there and a lot of the parking will be kind of around the back so they the parking is another big thing that they were talking about and uh, a quick little look at the image before I play the video for you guys is that you can kind of see that the red area is where they're gonna have the whole entire building but this little square right here is the uh, essential parking area they're gonna try to move the parking in the back make people kind of turn around that kind of deal so this is what Andrew had to say Part of the building permit requirement is that the, the barricade isn't planned to be removed at this time unless requested by the city. Um, the alley will be paved from Livingston Avenue to the border of the parking lot so that it creates a secondary access point for the parking lot uh, alongside, besides Hickens Avenue. Yes. Okay, so just for my benefit here, if somebody is traveling through the parking lot from east to west right now, can they make a turn to the right to go to south or a turn to the left to go to Livingston? They would only be able to go left to Livingston. The barricade blocks any north access or west access. Okay, so, and that condition would remain given the current proposal? Yes. All right, so um, those are kind of the, the, the how they're going to, uh, you know, trick the traffic and try to uh, kind of uh, convey that kind of thing. Um, um, as you see from that picture, a lot of space is going to be used to make the two-story complex, and it's going to be taking a lot of potential spaces that would be used for parking. Um, Julie Armstrong is worried about the future owners, so in case this uh, this uh, business doesn't work through, uh, they're just worried that um, uh, uh, just a generic bar would be built there. I think... We have to think about the long term because this is a zoning change and a zoning change stays with the property um, 50 years from now. Um, your kids don't want to take this over. You may want to sell it. So I think because of the um, placement of it in a neighborhood that um, when would be an appropriate time to talk about a a condition around ours that would stick with the property, not your business. So what I think what you could do is you could make a recommendation to staff that they draft a condition that addresses ours and then... All right, so uh, through this meeting, John DeBar suggests that um, uh, that they have a proposal for the zoning, since this is going to be a rezoned area, that... Um, that this can be done in the city council meeting on Monday, which brings me to say that uh, say City Anderson requested a conditional limiting hour of operations and of no service later than 11 p.m. for anything that may pop up on the property 50 plus years from now. They had a similar thing with parking in, in terms of rezoning and issues with DraftWorks Brewing. DraftWorks has a very tiny, if a non-existent parking structure. I think they only have maybe four or five really comfortable spaces that people can actually park on the property, but most of it's on the side in the surrounding area off of Tool Avenue. Um, one of the uh, things uh, that's changing within the Montana legislature is also extending hours to taverns, which are breweries that don't have liquor license, and there's a lot of exemptions for a lot of breweries, but one of the uh, big thing, um, the, one of the big stipulations about it is that you can't be open past a certain time. Um, the biggest push this year is that they're going to keep the t these tap rooms open until about 10 p.m. is when they have to stop serving alcohol to their customers. But one of the big things that the owner of the place said is like um, he wants to have that kind of thing, but also be able to be open for anybody who wants to be there later um, in the night. So um, that's just something that they're going to be talking about more on the Monday night's meeting. But so far in the other city council meetings, they had some interviews, a couple things. There's a couple meetings that are missing from the website as well. But of course, you can find more information about this and more by going to the city of Missoula's website at ci.missoula.mt.us. For some reason, they don't have the picture up. I don't know. Like this is the second time I've shown you the uh, website and they usually have nice little uh, slideshow of a bunch of the pictures of Missoula. But they haven't had it the last couple of times, so um, the website still works. I'm still able to play those videos for you guys, but for the most part, this is where you guys can get information about your current city government affairs. All right, let's uh, let's kick uh, let's throw things over to some um, arts. Um, 
this weekend. Um, Saturday, specifically, uh, of course, today is First Friday, but of course, Saturday is the 47th annual Missoula Art Museum auction, which helps benefit the classes, helps benefit the museum. A lot of this art is donated to the museum for auction, so they're going to have the auction on Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, the doors open at 5 p.m. in the ballroom, but I want to show you guys the the ma'am. I just want to find the right one. It is the one that, oh, I thought I had it. It's it, it's the one that's not in the art museum right now, but I did just want to give a shout out to the Missouri Art Museum before they auction off all these art pieces. So um, this video clip I'm about to show you may be the last time you're going to see a lot of this art installation together because after the Saturday, a lot of the art will be sold. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to tell you that it's time for your art clips. Um, it is your art guide for First Friday. Let's kick things off with your very first one starting at... Uh, it's at the Studio 180 Quilting. So they're going to be talking about quilting. And Deb Tucker of Studio 180 has created um, many... Uh, indigenous rulers that solve your most vexing quilt piecing issues. The instructions uh, for each ruler shows you how to make slightly oversized blocks and trim them down to precise shapes and sizes. Um, Kate will demonstrate how Tucker Trimmer helps you make perfect half square triangles. So this is an art installation, but also it's a learning experience at the Studio 180 Quilting. All right, up next, uh, the, uh, actually, that was at the Confident Stitch, um, February, uh, first Friday at Radius. Um, Radius Gallery is a contemporary art gallery in downtown Missoula dedicated to showcasing the work of contemporary artists. Um, you can drop by Friday. Um, it opens around 4 p.m. Most of these art first Friday installation deals are happening from 5 to 8 p.m. It's a big deal. A lot of art is emphasized, and a lot of artists are uh, gathering on these days to enjoy other arts, but we'll also talk in a little bit about their art. Um, emotive motion. Bernice's Bakery hosts uh, a plethora of artists. This one is featuring uh, Kelly, um, I believe... Um, it says it's Kelly's Mixed Media Abstract Artwork. Bernice's Bakery is, of course, located at 190 South 3rd Street Avenue. It just says Katie's. It doesn't actually say who Katie is. So go see Katie's art. Woo! All right. Exploration of Experience at Four Ravens Gallery. Firesmith Copper displays a work from their travels around the world and the Pacific Northwest. Meet one of the artists from the team and view their work that has been inspired for their Exploration of Experience. Firesmith Copper. Up next, we got Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. They're featuring uh, Rebecca Veeld, an exceptional artist getting back into on her feet after dealing with a great personal loss. Great Rebecca has thrown herself full speed into her artwork for building an inventory of original work. And it's going to be at Berkshire Hathaway. Up next, we got at the Dana Gallery. Uh, Dana Gallery is featuring large sexual works at, from the Dana Gallery private collection, as well as artwork from the talented local regional artists. Though he'll hope he's seeing a folk band, uh, Barnaby Wild, this Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m.
Um, next up, uh, this is all happening um, today at 5 p.m. Uh, they got this is going to be at Lake Missoula Tea Company. This is adventure photography and fiddle. Uh, they usually have a uh, music or some kind of uh, lecture performance type deal happen at the Lake Missoula Tea Company for your first Friday. Um, sometimes they talk about tea. Um, they are. Uh, this is about um, adventure photography by Don Franz. Um, currently living in Missoula, Montana. He moved here for three years ago um, from Southern California to pursue a dream in resource conservation and climate sci change science at the University of Montana. So his art will be featured at Lake Missoula Tea Company tonight. Um, you got bringing in the, out bringing the outdoors in artist, um, Kristen Barub. Uh, the show is going to be running all month of February. Uh, it's uh, modern nature art to bring life and beauty to your surroundings. It's hard to tell whether nature stops and art begins. Up next, we got Amanda Breitbach. Uh, Amanda Breit uh, Breitbach will be exhibiting land people and a series of immersive panoramic and aerial images that address topics of land use, ownership, and industrialization of agriculture. And that's going to be at the Frontier Space Gallery tonight. Uh, Holly Tripp is going to be featured artist at the Wild Hair Salon. Um, the paintings and photography by local artist Holly Tripp will be featured there. Native American rock art. This is Lee uh, Silliman. Uh, it's going to be a gallery 709 inside the Montana Art and Framing. Um, this is going to be happening all the month long of February. Um, Lee traveled to rock art sites in the public and private lands in Montana, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, where he photographed these types of designs. Pretty cool. Um, up next, we have... Um, Noteworthy Paper and Press is going to be featuring Golden Hour Glass Company. Please join this February for the opening of First Friday's Makers Showcase. Meredith Baird, owner of the Golden Hour Glass Company, will be there to share her gorgeous stained glass and sun catchers. We have two more, so bear with me. Um, there's a lot of art happening, and this is going to be at the Clay Studio of... Missoula, Small and Mighty, um, is an exhibit showcasing small-scale ceramic works that pack a conceptual and visual punch, uh, juried by um, nationally recognized ceramic sculptures currently based in Little Rock, Arkansas. Works ranging by 20 artists have been selected from over 100 entries from all around the country. The work ranges from intimate, small-scale, functional forms to detailed figurative sculptures. And finally, wrapping up your... Um, is a film festival. This is the uh, 14th annual Backcountry Film Festival. It's going to be at the Wilma, um, wrapping up your first Friday, calling Go Big or Go Home winter enthusiasts. Get ready to get goosebumps while you go oh and ah at the impact and importance of the winter wireland through the collection of short films. The 14th annual Winter Wonderland Alliance Backcountry Film Festival show in Missoula. At the uh, f um, for your first Friday, starting at 7:30 p.m. So this will wrap up your um, art viewing pleasure with a nice film festival. All right. So those are your, some of your things that are happening for your first Friday. I have your events and more later on. So I'm going to throw it over to another art clip. Uh, and a lot of these art clips are wrapping up this weekend, um, especially at the Zach. So here's one from the Zach. It's Steampunk by Lens.
Well, th very thank you to Rick Phillips, who uh, produces all the Eric clips that I provide for you guys for him wake up. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. This is from MissoulaEvents.net. It is the 13th annual Project Community Connect event starting today at 10 a.m. It's going to be at the Zoo Town Church until about 3 p.m. So if you know of anybody, if you see somebody who is visibly um, homeless, um, you can always send them here. This is a great opportunity to connect with the community, get uh, access to a bunch of resources to help you get back on your feet. If you're a person in crisis, if you're somebody who is kind of worried about about losing your home, this is a great way to uh, connect to the community. I need service includes green glasses, haircuts, clothing, dental care, medical, housing resources, employment services, child and family resources, resources for elderly and disabled persons, pet services, etc. All starting at 10 a.m. at Zoo Town Church, and that's located off of Brook Street. Tiny Tales um, is happening at the Missoula Public Library starting this morning at 10.30 a.m. It's a great way to get kids engaged in books at the Missoula Public Library. Hands-on science, physics, and spinning. Learn all about the science of spin and try out the new virtual reality fish I experienced at the Discovery Bench at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Uh, 812 Tool Avenue, and the makerspace is cardboard construction, so kids love cardboard. I love cardboard. I can't stop but break dance when somebody drops cardboard right in front of me. It's an impulse. Uh, Yarns and Watercolor is happening in the Musical Public Library from um, one, 12 to 1 p.m. Um, this usually happens in the makerspace. Um, Endeavor, after school, they have a Lego club, they have games and all sorts of stuff starting at around 1.30, and it's at their Endeavor after school. Um, family fun time at the Missoula YMCA. They usually do this Tuesday, Thursdays uh, from 9 a.m. to about 11.30, but on Fridays, they do it in the afternoon right after school from 3.30 to about 5.30. It's a great way to get your family together to have some fun and engaging um, activities for your indoor fun at the YMCA. But of course, there's Roots, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, and I believe uh, Missoula Gymnastics are a great way to stay inside, but also active. And then of course, you already know all the First Friday stuff, but the thing that's happening tonight is the 102nd Foresters Ball at the University of Montana. It's one of their biggest annual parties that happened at the University of Montana. Um, the forestry department, um, a lot of other departments build uh, within the basketball uh, arena, Dahlberg Arena, and they basically designed it to kind of look like it's a log cabin within their building while they have this party. So it's going to happen, the Foresters Ball. Um, Friday and Saturday, February, uh, this is happening from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. And you can play, ch ch pl check the website and look up Forster's, Balls, uh, Forster, Forster's Ball at UMT. Edu. Um, you can check it on Facebook and you can and more. So those are some of your uh, events for your Friday, uh, Saturday, uh, things that are happening for your Saturday. Um, kicking off is the Deer Lodge Valley Field Trip. If you want a free trip to Deer Lodge and you want to, it's like an all day thing. If you have a free day on Saturday, you just want to wake up early, uh, 745, 750-ish, they're going to be meeting at the um, Montana Adams Center parking lot at 7 a.m., um, 750, 745. You can contact um, Larry Weeks about this. This is, the number is 542-5632. Uh, you can email him BWS. Wow, that's that's a hard email. I'm not going to say it. But you, again, that number, it's Larry Weeks, and it's 549-5632. Uh, so. Zoo Town Groundhog Basketball Tournament is also happening. It's Groundhog Day tomorrow morning. So you can enjoy uh, Groundhog Day, and Punks to Tony Phil is either going to see uh, his shadow and get scared, and we might have six more weeks of winter. Who knows? We'll just figure that all out tomorrow morning. Um, but, of course, also that's happening tomorrow is the Winter Market. Winter Market at the Missoula Senior Center. It happens every Saturday to kind of help ease the pain of people who can't go to Farmer's Market during the winter and cold months. So this is a nice indoor uh, market where you can all buy breads, um, knickknacks, and all sorts of um, cured meats for your pleasure. Um, community um, Forestry Day is happening at the University of Montana. This is, uh, I think, in conjunction with the Foresters Ball. It, this is a free interactive event designed for children and families of all ages and a great opportunity to showcase the Foresters Ball during daylight hours. Organization from the university and the local community will each have their own specific booth with, that have many prizes, games, and more. So starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow at the University of Montana, they're going to be doing a Forester's Ball 
for a Community Foresters Day. Whew. A lot of stuff happening this weekend as well. Um, also, it's Super Bowl weekend, Sunday, big time Super Bowl. Um, if you're interested in doing all that and more, you can check that out. But of course, I want to throw it back to Saturday because Saturday there's the Winter Brew Fest at the Karis Park at from six to tw- uh, uh, from t- twelve to six p.m. It is for people who uh, like the great variety of beer that a lot of our breweries have come together at the Winter. Brewfest once again to be held at Karis Park, and it's happening from 12 to 6 p.m. So it's going to be happening during the day. Um, but if you want to drop off your kids and have a drink at Winterfest, uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins are happening from 1 to 5 p.m. It happens every single Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. It's ten dollars per kid, and the kid has to be between the ages of nine and 13. But if you want to make an exception, you can call us and be like. Okay, maybe a seven or eight year old might be okay. So just call us just to inquire. But usually we don't turn most kids away. Um, Cause this is just a drop in. It's like, yeah, come in, we'll hang out. We'll make some cool stop animation Lego movies. We'll have a good time. Um, once again, I wanna say that the Missouri Art Museum is doing their art auction, kicking things off at 5 p.m. at the UC Ballroom, which will uh, start the auction at 7 p.m. And of course, uh, they have an ACDA, uh, the American College Dance Association, doing a benefit concert in the open space tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. How do the beginning spring team help young dance students fundraise to attend the annual Northwest Conference in the um, ACDFA, uh, sponsored by uh, a different university each year? All right. Like I said, Super Bowl Sunday is happening tomorrow. It's Rams versus Patriots on CBS starting at 4.30 p.m. You might want to start watching at 5.30 because there's going to be a, so many pregame shows. Um, Maroon 5 will be playing, so Adam Levine and all that stuff. Um, but um, if you want to um, have a sober bowl, um, Fa- Valentine Center in Missoula um, is going to be celebrating, uh, recovering in a safer environment while enjoying the big game. Free entry, free food, free kids and youth activities, big screen TV giveaways, and more. And this is going to be at the Valentine Center here in Missoula. And this is uh, the second annual Sober Bowl. But if you don't want to do that, they have the Super Bowl uh, Customer Appreciation Day at the Union Club starting at 3 p.m. Uh, there will be food and drink specials. Party starts at 3 p.m. Uh, game time is 4.30. All right, so those are a couple things. It's a big weekend this weekend. Uh, you can find out more by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your source for everything Missoula. Here it is. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? I don't know. Why don't we just check MissoulaEvents.net? Maybe there's something on there. Perfect. So Missoula Events gives you plenty of options that you'll a lot of times say no to, but there's always a couple cool gems that'll pop up and be like, I got to do the that. So I'm going to do the that. All right, MissoulaEvents.net. Of course, I'm going to wrap up my show. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. (laughs) 